Hey, welcome to another edition of STV. On this week's show, we're carving up the backcountry around Grizzly Lodge in BC with Brock Hoyer on his timber sled. We've also got some advice on traction and control products from our boys at Woody's, and we're having a riot in first burn, so stick around. Brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris Snowmobiles, together we are born for more. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. Early this season, we got the chance to catch up with Brock Hoyer at Grizzly Lodge in BC. Brock is a professional snow bike rider who's been working with Timber Sled for six years now, developing and racing their products. In 2017, Brock took home the gold for the X Games Snow Bike Cross and the Canadian Snow Bike MX Championship. Since then, he's added silver and bronze to the mix with plans of adding more hardware in the 2020 season. Brock is passionate about snow bikes and one of this industry's biggest names and developers. The best way to put snow biking is it's just a unique experience in the backcountry. Um, riding single track on a motorbike or a trail bike, um, you can't cover terrain. You know, like say if we were in this exact area, you know, there'd be wind down, blow down, it would take you four or five times longer to get anywhere. In a snow bike, you can just travel and, uh, and really experience the backcountry. Um, to be a, a good sledder, it takes time. And, and if you have a little bit of bike experience, a little bit of sled experience, you can really get out to see what, what uh, the backcountry has to offer. And I feel like snow biking really uh, carves into that uh, taste that everyone wants to uh, have fun and be in God's country. I feel like it's definitely anyone's sport. And if I could actually pick a genre of like age of what people would actually like to ride it, it would be actually older. Um, younger generations, there's still lots of guys, but it definitely seems like um, the older age demographic is, uh, is picking it. Because it's, it's fun, it's easy to ride. Um, you know, you know, an hour later you can switch the thing back to dirt and you got a motorbike. And for me, it's easy to justify to my wife. I only need one dirt bike. I can ride it 12 months a year and put the track kit in the, in the closet and pull it out in the fall and back to riding again. So it's a perfect, uh, one tool for all. The best way to get into snow biking is anything. Um, a lot of dealers, uh, do demo rides and take, uh, guys out. We have a couple, uh, Facebook websites, chat lines. Uh, for setup, people that are new, they're always in there asking you setups. Um, yeah, and then the demo rides. And usually dealers and, and clubs usually have spots to go and stuff and people to go with. Um, but yeah, just definitely getting into your, your local players, Timbersa dealer, and um, getting the sales staff to kind of fill you in on what, uh, what's the new and, and what's the next. Hey now, don't be shy. Snow biking for me is the funnest part about it is sleds are cool too and most guys dress them up but most of your consumers are you know running them base model and they might change their grips they might put a can on it you know and it's it's very you know now people are wrapping sleds more but snow bikes everyone's different right everyone has a different bike um, they have different accessories different hand guards different different intakes different graphics different motor covers and it just, you accessorize it a lot different. And I feel like snow biking, it's just like everyone, no matter who you see or what they do, they're all slightly different. Everyone has their own style of uh, snow biking. For me, that's probably one of the coolest parts about snow biking is dressing your girl up and making her look real pretty. So, you know, you take pride in the build. It takes a lot of time and 
but it's something you uh, you feel like you you worked at it and it works really good and it complements your riding, I guess, in a sense. When it's super deep, it gets a little challenging. Uh, just to knowing the lines. Right now, we got some really good snow. We're actually able to have some real fun, and um, you know, you can couldn't ask for it any better. But uh, yeah, I, I'd say the super super deep stuff is challenging, but it's challenging on sleds too. So you know, you give some, you get some, and um, snow bikes get around really well. So I feel like uh, as long as you got snow underneath you, you're gonna have fun. We go out and ride with some new guys, and you usually kind of get an idea, get in the hang of it, and they'll stop and they'll stop right beside you. And the first thing you do as a dirt biker, you stick your foot out, right, to stop and hold yourself up. Whereas a snow bike like mine is, it's just sitting there. As soon as you plant it, it, it doesn't move. And uh, they always stick their foot out, and you always play dominoes, and knock all your bikes over. So I'd say that's the, the biggest mistake, but people catch on pretty quick and get a handle on it. First Burn is brought to you by Best Western, Hotels and Resorts. The 2020 Articat Riot really got me thinking about what type of rider that I am. I mean, am I the type of guy that spends all my time on the trails and just jumps off trail every once in a while? Or am I a boondock guy that only uses the trails to get to my play area? Because, you know, really trying to figure out what type of rider I am is critical in trying to figure out what type of riot I want to bring home. It used to be a crossover sled was basically one model in a manufacturer's lineup and it was pretty identifiable for what it was. Articat's Crossfire comes to mind, but nowadays this crossover segment is much more fuzzy. Within this category there are subcategories and a good case in point is the Riot. Making the right decision is important because the ergonomics on each one of the Riots are completely different from one another and really tailored to their intended riding style. For me, the plain old riot is best for my riding habits and the areas that I ride in. But there's a huge issue here. There's no X on the side of this thing. You need an X on the side of your snowmobile to be a badass, right? However, the X would be completely wrong for me. It has a much more aggressive riding posture, mainly because of the telescoping vertical steering post. On the trails, the ape hangers get in the way for positive trail handling. The Riot X's narrow front and rear suspensions are also pulled from the M line, and it has a two inch challenger track. All things that work well in a meadow, but not so much on the trail. If the big X on the side of the Riot swayed my decision, it would have been way wrong. The Straight Up Riot is the much better choice for a rider who is going to spend most of their time on the trails, with only the occasional foray into the rhubarb. On the trail, this Riot is much more at home. The wider front end is planted and the laid back steering post is more comfortable to hang on to and lets you get your weight forward and down more easily. It still has decent off-trail capabilities for when the need overcomes you, it's just that this Riot is optimized to spend most of its time on the trail, where the Riot X is optimized to spend most of its time off of it. It's for this reason. As a buyer, you have to be aware of what type of rider you are and how you plan on using the sled. Make the wrong choice and you won't be happy. All right, so here's a curveball for you. Articat has released their 2021 model lineup. And in case you haven't heard about it, there's another new riot to choose from. For 2021, there's a new Riot X. The new 21 has one major change. It's now got the Alpha rear suspension. This change should help customers identify what type of Riot rider they are, as it's now clearly focused on deep snow. 
Now, all the same reasons the Alpha 1 is changing the riding style for pure mountain sleds are now applied to the new Riot X. However, what makes this new sled work better in the deep stuff has made it worse on the trails. The regular Riots get some updates for 2021, but other than BNG, bold new graphics, they remain largely unchanged. And after spending some time talking with our test riders, we need a bit more time with the new Riot X to figure out the riding style. Stepping down from an Alpha 1 mountain sled will make for an easier transition to this new model, but if the Alpha skid is new to you, it will take some time to get used to. This all comes back to your ride experience, style, and even where you're located when it comes time to deciding between these two siblings that may have come from the same mother, but each have very different personalities. The new 2021 Monorail Riot X is replacing the current 2020 X package, making it a bit of a unicorn. But because of this, it also means there's gonna be a lot of them up here in the used marketplace. Articat's plan is to have a traveling roadshow of their 2021 product go all over the snow belt in the spring of 2020. Now, this is a great opportunity to ride all the new product that includes the new Riot X. So if you're a Riot buyer who's having trouble trying to figure out what type of Riot rider you're gonna be, this is a great way to help figure that out. In the grand scheme of things, the snowmobile world is pretty small and relatively young. And that means some of the people, families, and businesses that help shape the snowmobile world as we know it are still very much involved and passionate about snowmobiling. And one of those family-owned businesses is International Engineering and Manufacturing, but you might know them better as Woody's. We've been here for 51 years. We have approximately 65 employees. This is all we do is manufacture snowmobile traction control products here at Woody's in Hope, Michigan. We enjoy the sport, we love the sport. We're American made, and on top of that, we turn around and we supply three of four manufacturers as far as with their OEM product, which gives us the quality standards to turn around and create our Woody's line. Um, it is impressive to turn around and be able to work with the OEMs on new production vehicles before they are coming out, realizing what the industry is doing and making it all come to fruition by the end of the year. So it's really quite a dream come true. The uh, industry itself is great. We turn around and participate with a lot of local, state and uh, federal organizations as far as whether it goes trail. And then, uh, then the supporting of the racing organizations are huge. Um, it's a big giant family out there and we do our best to support all forms of snowmobiling. It's also interesting how niche companies like Woody's have that one person who absolutely lives and breathes their product line. At Woody's, their mad scientist is Larry Tidi. Our actual traction hookup guide uh, tries to describe the rider as a trail rider or intermediate or beginning rider to the performance based rider. So depending on the type of snowmobile or the way they ride, we have a studying uh, template and configuration that matches with that. For the person who wants to just have good braking and be safe on their kind of trail, the recommendation seems to be two per pitch of the track, so like in the 90 the 96 range, which is great for braking, uh, inclines, acceleration, and, and icy corners, to where then we can go to three per pitch to give them a little more acceleration or the performance rider who wants to go ahead and start on both sides of the high facts, which gives you great traction, acceleration, but when it comes to turning, then the rider has to work a little harder, hang off the side of the sled, and turn the snowmobile, along with having to increase his carbide so we have perfect balance between the front and the rear, which then increases steering pressure, and your arms get a little tired. It doesn't matter if you're a beginning rider or a, a top oval racer who wants to go out and play on the trails. Having the carbide match the number of studs means a lot because if you have too much carbide, not enough studs, the, the rear of the track will spin, want to come around, and the front end feels very, very heavy. And in the same token, if you have a large quantity of studs in the rear and no carbide on the front, it will push the skis no matter how much you turn or lean, it'll overpower the carbide. 
Well, the, the biggest thing is as time has gone on, uh, snowmobile tracks have gotten better, suspensions have gotten better, and end users are coming in and seeing our name involved, and that means a lot because we're supporting the sport that they love. Coming up after the break, we're going to hear from one of Woody's biggest fans. Stick around because you just might recognize him. Levi, talk to me a little bit about how traction and control is important to you in your riding career with being a snowcross racer and freestyler. You know, traction control has been a huge element for all of my racing career and my freestyle career and on into all of the different projects, the things we've done because, you know, traction control is how you can, it allows you to put the sled where you want to put it. Yeah. Whether it's the traction of the studs or the screws that you're running, you're able to hook up to get to, you know, through the icy turns on a snow cross track, or even for me in freestyle on the Astro turf, the screws in the track being able to keep me from spinning to do a backflip. So it's been a really huge element um, in all that we've done throughout my career. I mean, you really need that precision, right? Because when you need traction, you need it now. You can't afford to be spinning the track at the wrong time. I mean, I can imagine that would get a little bit unnerving if you're trying to do a backflip, right? Absolutely, you know, making sure that you have traction when you need it is key. And, and when you're going in, you know, like you said, to do a backflip, you don't want that thing spinning. You don't want any crazy variable because you're doing enough crazy already. So it's really key to have traction in the front and the rear. And I mean, for you, you've been using Woody's product for a long time. So talk to me a little bit, maybe, how did you get involved with Woody's, like way back when? Woody's has been awesome. It's like, Woody's was our first like official sponsor. You know, when I was a little kid, I, or early in my career, I, I remember sending in my resume and you know, back then it was like, I always went, I'm like, okay, I wanna, I wanna be with the best guys. So you send the resumes to all the big guys and you just sit there like, I hope this works. And I remember getting a letter back from Woody saying, we were accepted on the 50-50 program, which is like their entry level sponsorship program. That was big news back oh, then. Like that. Huge, yeah. huge, right? For me, I'm like, oh my goodness, we did it. Woody's is on board. So I got my Woody's stickers on my sled. And you know, it was just such a cool thing. And to, to be with Woody's from those early years all the way through my career and, and now into owning the team, it's like, it's been really cool and, and Woody's will, will always have a special place with me because of that. Now for the products that you guys are using, you're, you've got some pretty crazy studs on your sleds, like hollow, you know, big long hollow ones and things like that. But you know, Woody's has definitely taken the knowledge that they've gained on the track and applied it for trail riders. You know, that's, that's something that you can clearly yeah. see. That's like the coolest thing is like, they're learning all these different things in these extreme conditions of racing on ice, on snow cross, and they're applying that to the normal rider who's out on the trail and making those products better. So, I mean, it's, that's such a win-win, you know, we're, it's helping us go faster on the track and it's helping the trail rider and, and just the performance guy have a better experience out on the trail. And you're a trail guy yourself as well. I mean, we've, we've experienced it, we've ridden together. Um, so talk to me about how, you know, we know that traction and control is super important on the track and, and uh, in the freestyle stuff that you're doing, but it's pretty important for trail riders too, right? I would say it's even more important. You know, one of the biggest things with, with trail riding is when you have traction control products, it's keeping you safe out on the trail. Mm -hmm. Not only can you perform better, if, you, if you're that aggressive rider and you like kind of ripping down the trail, it's gonna help you there, but the main thing, and this goes for all trail riders, is you come into a corner when it's icy, and if you don't have traction and control products, the difference is you might be going off into the woods or carving it, that turn. It's, it prevents the unexpected. Exactly, and that's that's the key element is if, you know, a lot of people shy away from studs simply because they think it's this big process putting them in, which it's really not that big of a deal. And the benefit is, is when you come into that turn and, it, and you don't realize that it's all ice, it keeps you, you're able to slow down. You won't even know the difference because yeah. you're like, oh cool, I just slowed and did the turn like normal. Yeah. Whereas if you don't have it, that's you either blowing straight off the turn or if there's an oncoming driver, who knows what will happen. Yeah, and I mean, if you skid sideways, you just don't have the reaction time to save that thing before it's flipping and maybe you get into a barrel roll, which can be pretty dangerous right, too. Right, right, okay. exactly. The unexpected ice is like probably the biggest hurdle that everyone runs into. And, and not only, we're talking a lot about studs, but even carbide, you got a exactly. good set of carbide I mean, regardless if you can slow down, if you can't turn when you hit that ice, yeah. you're still going off that turn. So you have to couple those studs with some good carbide. And yeah. one of the things that's overlooked is checking your carbide. You know, we think of it as they like- They are a wear item. Yeah, you know, it's a wear item. So it's like, we put them on and you're like, sweet, got my carbide done, I'm good forever. And you're like, yeah. 
No, you gotta check those. I mean, it's just like tires on your car. They're gonna wear out. Yeah, and you might have to check them every ride too. If you're early season and you're knocking off a of rocks or you've gotta cross asphalt and you're grinding those things away or clicking them off of railroad tracks. We just got back on a ride. We must have crossed 15 sets of railroad tracks and you just hear those things clicking away. Yeah. It doesn't take much to, to break a chunk of carbide out of there or even bend uh, the whole wear bar itself and that's gonna throw off your handling crazy. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things that's overlooked is no one, no one thinks about that time when you get that little jolt, when you hit a rock or you hit something, something hard. I mean, it can bend that wear bar. And if that happens, then all of a sudden, you know, that thing's it's looking crazy darty. Yeah, yeah, crazy dart and it's running all over the place, which is going to reflect on your performance. You're not going to be able to turn. It's going to feel different. And ultimately, when you have when you have that additional variable where you don't know what it's going to do, that's when accidents happen. Yeah, and if you figure out too late that you needed more traction to get slowed down before you go off, off the trail in an unpredictable way, it's too late at that time. Right, and that's, <laughs> you don't want to be in that spot. No, that's a bad spot to be. Hey, thanks for tuning in to STV. We really appreciate the time you take to come out and talk sleds with us. So until next time, may all your trails be flat and your powder deep. STV has been brought to you by Ultimix Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. CKX, wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. Welcome to this week's YouTube comment of the day. And today's comment comes from Sturgeon F who writes in and asks, what's with the vintage 83 to 86 T-Bird in the background? More information, please. Well, Sturgeon F, to answer your question with some more information, it is an 85 T-Bird, so you're right on the money there, but it's got a uh, 450 horsepower small block Ford in it with an AOD automatic behind it, and uh, it does go like stink. Also, uh, Dino S writes in, juvenile. And that's it. Thanks, Dino.